gun that I don't know why I got this, but it looked cool. That's it's cool, but it's not the main thing. The main thing is Shangshou 6x6 Master Morphix. This is very, very cool. The Master Morphix is a very popular 2x2 shape mod. And this is a bigger version. Here are the 6 layers. Um, let's see how it okay. Not bad. Like, I wouldn't use it as like a speed 6x6, but. It's good for shape art. Like it doesn't catch for no reason. It's a bit slow, but that's good. I, guess, it, it, I think it's good because it's really difficult to align things here. Because when it's gonna start shape shifting. What do I do? There we go. Yeah, when, when it starts shape shifting, it's gonna be very difficult to align things. So it's, I think it's good. I've never solved a shape mod with a like a shape mod that's bigger than 3x3. The biggest I've done 3x3. So this is gonna be exciting. I probably am gonna be able to solve this because I do know enough about commentators uh, to fix the parts that aren't just like a normal 6x6. But we'll see if I run into any um, any troubles while solving this. Yeah, this is really cool. I like the sound it makes, but that's, that's a dumb reason to like something. Um, it's like sort of a checkerboard, I guess. And I don't remember the, the best way to do the checkerboard on the cubes. On, on even, even the cubes, I mean. So just use the middle layer. This is the middle layer, by the way. As um, I like use the two middle layers. If you've never seen a Master Morphix before, let me show you something. I'll just undo the checkerboard. Okay, alignment's gonna be tough. You can already, like, even when it's in the. I want to say cube shape, but it's not cube shape. Tetrahedral shape. Uh, alignment is difficult. But, I mean, I'll get used to it probably. So, yeah, this is the corner. This, these pieces are the center. These are edges. This is also a corner. This tiny, tiny thing is also a corner. Uh, yeah, when you. Like, I, I just replace this corner with this corner. Look how, how much open space there is. So, I am gonna make sure this is recording before I scramble it because it'll be very sad if I don't get this on camera. Yep, it's recording. Let's uh, scramble this cube. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> this makes very interesting shapes. This, this part is uh, like out flat. I mean, it, it's curved, like it's continuous. And this part is just there's a hole. There's a hole in the cube. Why is there a crying baby outside? I'm ruining my recording. Same solve as the 6x6, it's more like a 6 by 6 super cube with uh, identical parts. Um, yeah, for example, I'm pretty sure these two parts are the same, so they could swap and cause uh, parity issues. Um, but also, there's no new functionality beyond, beyond what a 6x6 has. 
but it's also super cute. I think these two are part of the same center, but you probably need to let's see, let's see if I can sell them. Shape of this is amazing. Like, I'm not getting as excited as I should be because I've seen videos of you know, really big puzzles online, but I just got one idea. What do I do? Okay, there. Okay. Yeah, but just like the shape of this. Look at this. This is a big idea. Look at this. <laughs> this is a jumbled mess. Jumbled, jumbled has This is a mess. <laughs> this piece looks so out of place. Like, it looks like layers are really misaligned. But they're not. This, I can turn them from here. Um, yep, I am. I'm gonna solve this, and I'll be back. <sighs> okay, so I'm back. I've solved this cube. It was on camera, but it took me about an hour and a half. And I actually encountered some things that I didn't expect to. Like, I thought I knew everything in advance, which is I didn't. Um, so since I solved it off camera, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually scramble this cube again and I'm gonna solve it and I'm gonna do sort of a walkthrough slash tutorial explaining how I dealt with um with any difficulties that I encountered during the solve uh, to hopefully help if anyone else needs help and this could probably be generalized to um, you know any uh, end by end shape mod because the master morphic isn't that unique like the the shapes are unique but the concept isn't and also I'm not gonna explain in like in that much deal that a complete noob would understand I'm gonna assume you know how to solve uh, a six by six uh, a three by three shape mod uh, such as the master morphics because Obviously, this this is a six by six master morphix. So it's gonna involve both of these. That's probably about all I wanted to say for the introduction part here. And now I'm gonna finish scrambling this, and then I'll get started. So I think I'm pretty done scrambling. This looks looks good to me. Um, so first off, I want to say if you have this puzzle and you're looking for like a tutorial or something, please try to solve this first by yourself. There's really no point in uh, <laughs> getting a puzzle just to look up a tutorial straight away because, I mean, you aren't going to be speed solving this or anything, I hope. Um, yeah, so I do recommend trying trying these out first by yourself if you can't figure it out then uh yeah i i'll show how i solve this puzzle uh there is um something probably pr pretty specific to this puzzle and it is alignment because it's really easy to like misalign the layer and think this is a line well actually corner cut there but like think it's aligned and then it's not the easiest way for me, at least to tell, was by this outer layer. You see how this is in frame, right? Let's check. Barely. Yeah, so you want, um, so you see like kind of this line going here? This, this means there's a layer here. And if it's something like this, you know this isn't right. But it, it's really confusing at the beginning, and the more you play with this, uh, yeah, the, the better you'll get at aligning. So don't worry if you struggle at the beginning. Anyways, onto the actual puzzle. So this is probably the biggest difference from a, from a normal 6x6. And it's the fact that these centers 
They are just uh, do you have a 66? I'll give you a 66 actually to demonstrate. Okay, so this right here is the MGC 66. It's super good by the way. I really recommend this. Uh, so the first thing is you see here these four milliliters, for example. They're all the same. Nothing would happen if you swap. If you okay, right now. Uh, I just swapped three uh, white centerpieces, but you didn't notice because okay, maybe you noticed the, mo the logo moved because they're the exact same. But um, on the shape mod, they aren't. So you need to solve them into uh, like more specific positions than a normal six by six. Anyway, how do you do that? So let's let's pick a center to start from. I'll pick the green blue. Actually, this is a good example. Let's do. Uh, yeah, um, not all pieces are going to be split, half of them are one color, uh, yeah, for example here. So anyway, I'm gonna, this is lucky so I won't pick that. I'm gonna start uh, from the green blue center, like use this piece to start. So in general the, the way to solve centers here I found isn't doing by bars, that's what I do usually on 6x6. But instead, I would solve the middle four, and then start expanding like this. So start with the middle four, add two more of these edges, add a one by three bar, add a one by three bar, then add the final one by four bar. So how do we do this? Green blue. Let's let's solve, try to solve this piece now, and it needs to be specifically a green middle center because. You see, it matches with this green diagonal. So let's see. It's gonna be confusing at the beginning to see what is and what isn't a middle center, but I know that these four are middles. So there's no pure green one. This green blue one looks cool, but it doesn't fit. You can also feel with your finger that this isn't the shape it's supposed to be. So it's not this. Let's look over here. Again, these four, nothing. Let's look over here. Oh, hey, this is a green one. I'm actually not sure if um, like if any green piece will fit because as you, you'll see later for other piece types, the color isn't enough always. You'll see later. So anyway, I'll connect this green piece to here and I moved it specifically so that will be here, not here. And now let's try to do a white L. And uh, yeah, that seems good. These seem connected. Okay, now let's build the other part. Which pieces does this need to be? This is going to be another like diagonal green blue one, and this is going to be a pure blue one. So let's see. Here's a blue. And remember, I'm, okay, I'm keeping this on the right, I need to remember that. This is a blue. And there's the blue green. Okay, so our center, the center we built is here. I'll move it to the left to not ruin it. And now again, I want to pair these two, except I need like this is paired correctly. If I put this blue over here, it wouldn't be paired correctly. And now let's just insert it with an R2. And there we go, that's like part of a center. Okay. Uh, now I got lucky, I see these two greens are paired. But you see, even though they're green, they don't fit here. These pieces are supposed to be green, but green isn't enough right here. However, these two are paired, and if they don't fit here, I'm pretty sure they'll fit here. Let's try that out. Let's move them out of the way. Move the center. And yeah, there we go. This fits. And again, this wouldn't be a problem with normal 6x6 because any two green pieces fit here, not these specific two. So anyway, there we go. And again, this might be confusing if you're just watching the video, but if you like play around with this yourself, then it'll be much, much clearer. Well, now I want to build this, so I'm going to need a green corner and two green uh, obliques. That's what these pieces are called. Here I have a corner and an oblique already paired, and let's quickly check that fits. Yep, these two will fit, so I just need to look for the last oblique. Let's put this over here. Uh, 
Oh okay, yeah, something that happens, like sometimes, it's not even the fault of the puzzle, it's just that the way you grip, you need to move the finger really up, so it's really easy to move two layers at once. Make sure that doesn't happen because that's, that's very sad when that happens. If you need to read, if that happens later and messes something up. Anyway, I found this piece, which could fit. Let's check. Yeah, it does fit. You notice there are two uh, green pieces that can be here. Let's, let me quickly find the other one. There we go. Okay, I found it. This green piece here and this one, they form like an up and down shape, which isn't what you want. That's not how solved Astromorphic should look. So you want the piece that like keeps it going up. Anyway. Um, oh, I got confused there. Let's make sure this is aligned. There we go. And let's insert these three pieces. Now we have a three by three in, in the center. Now let's try and build this. What pieces do these need to be? Think for yourself for a second. What pieces are those, are those supposed to be? Okay, so in the corner we need a blue green and here we're gonna need two blues so let's see here's a green blue like the corner we need and here's an oblique already connected to it and as as we're gonna see if we insert to here they will match with the rest of the center so let's look for the third blue oblique uh, this one is in the right spot if I do an F2 I can do an R, or like a wide R, but yeah, it does this up and down thing. We don't want that. Luckily, we have another oblique to try here. And this one's a different shape, so it'll probably work. Yeah, there we go. Now I can insert this. Let's struggle a bit with alignment. Like uh, this. And there we go. That's three out of four. Now I want this final bar. And I'm gonna need this blue corner that's already here, this blue piece, this other blue piece, and the other blue green corner. Alright, uh, let's see. You, you really should, like, if you're watching this as a tutorial, you, like, this part isn't really difficult and there's no, like, set algorithm to solve this. It's a lot and lot of try and trial and error. So I do recommend just trying this out. Anyway, let's find the green, green and blue corner. I'll start from that. There it is. And now it's this blue oblique doesn't connect. So let's try a different oblique. How about this one? Like this piece. And yeah, it connects. Okay, let's see. We want another blue oblique. Let's try that one. No, this doesn't fit. How about this one? This fits. Okay. And now, I know I saw earlier the last blue piece was here, so let's do this. So I'll move it out of the way. And now I'll pair this piece with these. Like that. And now I'll insert them. And that's the first center. Right here, this looked aligned, but it's not. Uh, is this a line? This is a line. Okay. So my I did an R move. The center is right here. Let's move this in. And now, this center and this center, this yellow red one, I mean, they look big and pair up. Now I'll show you what I just did on a normal 6x6. This is basically what I did. Imagine I'm solving this one and this one. If it, because this is just a normal 6 by 6 I can do this, and the green center is solved. But instead, I want to pair these two in the other way. So I do this, so that I can pair them like that. Okay. Oh, cool, I got lucky, and these two reds solve themselves. Themselves. So now let's uh, build this. I need a red corner, and... Uh, yeah, I need a red corner and two red obliques. There's one oblique already here. Uh, I'll ignore it. Let's just uh, solve. Wait, actually. Oh well, never mind. I got <laughs> I got very lucky. Never mind. 
but I will use the fact that I have two obliques here connected. So let's just look for a, a red corner center. Uh, here's one. So I'll move it over to here. So that with an R2, I can match it up, match it up with this. And even though I have four uh, pieces paired here, I'm only going to solve uh, three of them. Because that's how I solve. You could do bars too. It, it will work. There's no reason for it to not work. But I'm just more comfortable with this. So anyway. And now I want to solve these. And if I put this up here, we see this corner matches. So I want to, see, I want to solve the two yellow obliques next to it. Oh hey, I have two paired yellow obliques. It probably didn't scramble it that well. But pairing them up is the same thing as, you know just pairing the corner. So yeah, I paired up this corner with these, and now I'll insert that. Uh, yeah, okay, now I want to build the final bar, which is going to be two yellow obliques, a yellow corner, and a yellow red center. So let's start with the yellow obliques. I have two here, except actually I don't think this is going to work when you pair them up. Oh, it did. Oh, well, never mind. Let's go get checked if I insert them. No, okay, if I insert them, they won't match because these aren't the right obliques. These belong in some other center, like the yellow green or something. I'm not sure. So let's see. This is not an oblique. <laughs> never mind. Okay, here I have two more obliques. Let's see which one is uh, different. Okay, so the oblique on the right didn't match this one, so this oblique is different. So I want, I want to pair another oblique to this one on the right. Oh hey, here's an oblique. Does this work? Yeah, it works. There we go. So I paired two obliques. Now I want to pair the yellow-red corner and the yellow corner to it. Okay, here's the yellow corner on the left. This would again be fine on normal 6x6. Let's move it to the right because it doesn't belong on the left. There you go, I moved to right and now it's fine. Let's quickly find the yellow red piece, it's over here. So I'll do B2 and then L2. And there we go, this bar is paired up. Now on normal 6x6 you might do this. But uh, this messes up the centers. Because once something is solved you don't want to disturb it. Instead you can do it like this. Like, instead of RU to R' prime, you do L, F to L' prime to insert the, the piece. And there we go. So that's first two centers. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do uh, my next few centers now without, expi without explaining that much because I feel like I've wasted a lot of time already. Uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna do my next few centers without explaining. And I'll cut ahead to the next time something special happens. Okay, so I've just finished my third center. And right now, what center is next? Well, the easiest way to do that is to solve the centers relative to each other. Like, just align them. And now it's pretty obvious this should be yellow, this should be blue. So the next center is yellow-blue. center done now again this is I aligned this this is blue yellow so this is gonna be blue this is red, so this is gonna be blue red right okay I actually forgot this but uh, for last two centers you can't really do this method of building a center in the middle because uh, you're gonna need to do a lot of commentators to fix that. So I'm gonna actually turn this into a bar. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm gonna start making bars now. <laughs> but it's, it's the same thing as a normal 6x6. And at this point you should be used to uh, used to solving, um, what's it called, like, with the uh, different centers.
There we go. Okay, so as you may know, on a six by six, you can't uh, like you can't solve this last bar normally. Instead, you just have to solve uh, three pieces, and then use the commutator for the last one. Okay. Or you could get lucky and, and solve this one, but I didn't. Okay, now here is the problem. You see? What ha well, what's gonna happen if I do this commentator? Like, if you if I just do this, like, R, U prime, R, watch what's gonna happen. This happened. Well, <laughs> dang. Okay, what happened? So, this is the probably the biggest part. This and well, what's gonna what's about to happen for the last center. Because as you may notice, this isn't even remotely close to solved. Not at all. It's a jumbled mess because you, you need to fix these centers relative to each other, not just relative to the face they're on. But we'll get to that later. How do we fix this? So I'm gonna put this aside and make it normal 6x6. Six six. I'll keep this here actually. Fellas, we're about to learn about commutators. So what is a commutator? You do one set of moves, we'll call that A. For example, I pick this one, R U R prime. And then we'll do uh, another set of another set of moves. And this one I will pick, for example, D. And now we'll undo the first one. So A prime. What's R U R prime backwards? If I quickly get a 3 by 3 to show this on, R U R prime backwards is gonna be R U prime R prime. So R U prime R prime. And then what's D backwards? D prime. Um, some like when I mean backwards, I mean if you do like first you do the alb, then you do the alb backwards, it's gonna be solved. So like R U R prime, and it's not just reading it backwards, because reading it backwards would be R prime U R, and that isn't solved. Instead you inverse it. So the last R prime turns into an R, the middle U turns into a U prime, and the first R turns into an R prime. Hopefully I edited, edited this well enough so that you see on screen uh, some cool things. I'm so dumb. Anyway, so what do commentators do? Well, basically anything. But if you use them in a specific way, they can um, just do th uh, three cycles, which means cycle three pieces, like how you can cycle three edges. We can cycle any three pieces that we want intuitively, if we understand how this works. So the commentators. Not all, com all commutators are like this, but all the commutators I'm going to show you and I'm going to use here and honestly, almost all commutators in general go like this. So you start with the sum setup move, we'll get to that later. And then the com goes, as I said, A, then B, then the inverse of A, so A prime, then the inverse of B, so B prime. Most common one and the one, like all you need for this cube is for A, or B, we'll call we'll say it's A just for simplicity's sake for now. A is gonna be an uh, an insert. I mean, I'm sorry. A is gonna be an insert. What is an insert? An insert is something like I'm gonna show on the outer layers first. R prime D R. What did that do? We want to insert this piece over to here. It's like doing like R U R prime or something, but instead we're doing it uh, from the bottom. And you'll, see, you'll soon see why, it makes it a lot clearer. So you can do R prime D R, which inserts this piece into here. And then, so that's our insertion. And how do we inverse that? It's gonna be R prime D prime R. So now we can do uh, our, um, our interchange move. And this is gonna be so our insertion will serve R prime D prime R. So the second move is D prime, and the move, like you see, the D layer changed a lot. Um, R and F changed, 
you change only by one piece. So we want to do, we want to move the U layer. So you can do a U to bring this corner into here. And now we're gonna undo the the insert, the insertion. So instead of R prime DR, which is what we did, we're gonna do R prime D prime R. And now we can undo the the interchange. We did a U, so now we're gonna do a U prime. Okay, that's very cool. Uh, how do you use it? Like how do you know which pieces are gonna be affected? Well, R prime DR, we set inserts this piece into here. So we know this is gonna move over to here um, after we finish the album. What about this? Where, where do we want this to go? Let's see, we want this to go here. So we can do R prime DR, our insertion, which inserts this needs to go to here. So we insert this piece into here. Okay, we inserted it. Now what? Now we wanna move. We, got, we want to use the interchange and what is the interchange? Interchange is uh, like this is gonna be a better example now how to tell when you can when you have two pieces that are interchangeable you can swap between them or like you can move this one over here with the U2 or if you wanted to do this piece you can, you can move it here with the U prime and back to this case uh, want to move this to here to here no, that's not what we want to do. We want this to here to here. So we started by doing our insertion. Like, okay, we notice we can do a U2 interchange between these two, and that can bring the, either this to here or this to here. It doesn't matter in this case because they're the same. And we have our insert to here. And I'm explaining this in corners because centers on this cube will be confusing. But yeah, I'll, I'll move on to centers later. So again, we can do R from DR as our insertion. And now what we want to do is we want to move this other piece to the place where this piece started. In this case, the, the piece here, like this is the piece we're, we're talking about. So you got to move this piece over here with the U2. And if we wanted to use this piece, we will just do a U to bring it over here. But we're doing this, so it's a U2. And now we just undo the insertion, R prime D prime R. And now we just undo this of the YouTube. And it could be more like easier to learn if you looked at it like this, as in this piece, you can insert with an R U R prime and have D as an interchange. But all the columns we're gonna use on the Master Morphic 6x6 will use this style, like with starting with R prime D R. Okay, how the heck do I, do I apply this to centers? Okay, let's open an example. Okay, so we've learned about commentators um, for corners and the idea of applying them to centers, which is what we're going to do, is extremely similar. It's almost the same thing, it's just you turn different layers. For example, instead of doing this, which is the insertion we were talking about, you might do something like this or something like this any two any combination of two like some r prime slice which could be this or this and some d slice which could be this 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 or this any of the four slices even though those are technically u primes like th these are a u slice I'm still, we're still going to be using any slice this way, any of these four. Okay, so, uh, it's very difficult to, like, to see what's happening here because all these centers are the same. So, I've numbered the pieces, that way we know, um, what pieces we're talking about. On this cube, it's very easy to tell because, you know, we want to move this piece, um, to... To this piece, we, we know it's like 
the red to the blue or if we want to move this piece over to here again it's red, red to blue but on a 6x6 it'd just be white to white and that's more it, it's difficult to explain so here I have my order this is one it needs to go to two and two needs to go to three okay so here we can do our insertion first and generally you can do either the insertion for first or the interchange first and I'll show both examples like here I'll be talking about like right now this example one needs to go to two so do the insertion first how do we insert this this is just like rprime dr and you might want to play a little bit with your 6x6 or a 5x5 five five or whatever to, to get used to because these two it's not obvious they can insert them with an rprime dr but you can so just like yeah th this is in this kind of slice so we we're gonna move it down and now we can move this piece over here and it's important that they're the same piece type you can't you obviously can't move a corner to the center but since the six by six you also can't move this counterclockwise oblique to this clockwise oblique and that's a bit confusing i know practice it on a normal six by six figure out which piece goes where and you should get it so anyway, how do we insert this we do r prime and i'm not going to specify which r prime it is because this is like too small r prime or whatever i'm not going to bother with that so i'm just going to say r prime and the layer i'm talking about is the layer in which the piece is in so now we can move this piece in with the d and then do an r back so now we inserted one which was over here we inserted one over to here okay and now we want to do our interchange move what's the interchange we bring the other piece into this spot as well but with one move instead of three in this case it's going to be a u prime now we're going to undo we did r prime d r to insert this piece now we're going to do r prime d prime r to put it back r i accidentally turned the wrong layer there and it will happen a lot more on this cube just make sure you know like you, you realize that they did that and then you undo it and do the correct move because it's very easy to turn the, the wrong layer anyway we did r prime d r u prime r prime d prime r now all we have to do is inverse b and you might think that this is uh worthless <laughs> because i mean it's a center the center is already solved but when we're going to add setup moves, and we are going to need setup moves, um, then we will need to make sure to undo this. Um, okay, let's give another example. So now, instead of going 1 to 2 to 3, we're going to go, we're going to go 1 to 3 to 2. Or in the same way, 2 to 1 to 3. Okay, so notice again, we have our insertion, like R prime dr can insert this. Oops, from the R can't insert it. But this piece needs to go to here, right? Not to here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do our uh, interchange first. We're gonna start with the U prime, and the interchange brought this piece over to here, to the spot. And now we're gonna do the. Um, now we're gonna bring in this piece with our insert insertion, which is gonna be R prime D R. Now we're gonna undo the, you can either see this as doing a diff, an interchange here, or you can see this as undoing the interchange that we did earlier. Because as we said, comms are A, B, A prime, B prime. In this case, A is the um, interchange. So A was U prime, now A prime is gonna be U. And the insertion, now we're gonna need to undo B, which is the insertion, R prime, D prime, R. And the cube solved. So I only explained this for the obliques here, but the, the same concept applies for other pieces, except just the insertions are going to be different. For example, for corners, we can do R prime, U prime, R. Okay.
let's do this here. So this is gonna be difficult, but okay, let's do this. Because it's difficult because aligning here is difficult and seeing what you're doing is hard as well. But okay, let's do this. R prime. Now we want to do a D that has this piece. So it's like, uh, I'm rotating, rotating to make it easier to, to turn. I'm doing the same alg. D. Okay, R. That was our insertion, R prime dr. Then we want to do a U prime to bring this into here. U prime. Now we want to undo the R prime dr with an R prime. D prime, D prime, R. And there we go, that's our last, our uh, fifth center. Okay, we solved five centers. Now we have our sixth one. <laughs> Which isn't automatically solved like our normal six by six. Okay, how do we do it? We do, how do we deal with this? Um, well, let's um, let's make sure the camera is recording. Yeah, it is. Okay, how do we deal with this one? We use more commutators. Okay, in this example, I'm gonna be showing this for the middle centers, but again, it's the exact same concept for these pieces for the other center pieces. I'm just gonna be showing it on only one piece type. Okay, so here we finished our uh, fifth center, and now only the sixth center is left. And the pieces here are all messed up. Um, you could see that on, well, this is solved because I'm recording this after. But yeah, these, these uh, uh, pieces here are gonna be all messed up and you're gonna need to fix them. Now, you're gonna need to figure out which piece goes where, that's obviously something you need to do, and I didn't explain that yet, like how to do that, but it's, it's not very difficult, because this piece needs to go here, it's, yeah, so to to show this on a normal 6x6, I numbered them 1, 2, 3, and now you might want to do a commutator, but how can we R prime dr doesn't bring anything. There's a bunch of ins of interchanges. Yeah, we can do like interchange one, two. We can interchange everything, but we can't do any insertions. So here we're gonna do a setup move, a setup move, and this is where like actually completing the com and undoing the uh, interchange move. It wasn't required up until now, but now it's necessary. Otherwise, the cube will get messed up. So, what can we do? Um, you can put the centers like this, you can do other orientations such as, uh, I don't know, like this, uh, like this, this is going to work too, but this is the, um, the orientation that works best in my opinion, uh, depends on what works for you, I'm going to show it for this example. So in this case we want to move 1 to 2 to 3, or uh, an easier way to think of it is going to be 3 to 1 to 2. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a setup move. And this is scary to do on a uh, Master Morphix because during the alg the cube is going to look very scrambled. As long as you don't mess up, it should be fine. That's a big if, but if you don't mess up, then it's fine. Anyway, we want 3 to go to 1. So we can, where can we insert 3? Inserting 3 is going to move it over to here, like this. It's saying 3 moves it to 2. That's not what we want. We want to move 3 to 1. So we're going to start by doing the um, interchange move. We're going to move 1 into 2 with a U. Now we're going to insert 3 into 1 with our R prime U prime R. And now we're going to undo the interchange. And now we're going to undo the insertion. And now we can... We did our setup move. Then our commentator algorithm, whatever, we solved. And now we're undoing the setup move. So again, we do a setup move. We do the com, like normal. And then we undo the setup move. Yeah, that's about, um, that's uh, explaining a setup move and why you need it. For your fifth center, you don't need a setup move. But for, um, for the 6th center, you can't do insertions from one face to another 
unless you do something stupid like this, but then you can't do interchanges. Don't bother with that. You need to do a setup move. Um, yeah, you need to do a setup move, something like this, and then do a com, just like how you did for the fifth center. So first, let's try to align this. I'm going to solve the middle ones first. Let's try to align this so that I have exactly one solved piece. Um, like solved middle piece. So I'll, I'll like, I'll reference this center as my solved one and I want to solve the other ones around this. Why am I not picking these two that are solved relative to each other? Because we're using three cycles. How, I, I can't swap two pieces. That would involve like b picking another center and there's no reason to do that. So I'm gonna pick this one as the one that's solved. Okay, now I have this. To, actually, what, which, like what's the order? Let's see. If you get the order wrong, you can just do another three cycle. Like how if you get a U-perm wrong, you can just do that U-perm again. So here I see this top left. Uh, piece needs to go to the top right needs to go to the uh, Bottom right it's like back left back right front right like this So this is exactly actually the example I gave earlier with these three pieces um, Except maybe the The order like maybe the direction changed. I don't remember exactly but Yeah, so this piece Needs to go here, needs to go here, needs to go here. These back two can interchange, as we said. So, let's move the front piece out of the way. This is scary. <laughs> Doing this is scary. Especially when I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to go slow and explain instead of concentrate on this. Actually, let's look at this again. Yeah, okay. And now I have this piece. Looking at this like a six by six is difficult, but we have this piece in the on the left side, in the front, in the right up. Needs to go to here. Needs to go to here. How can this go here? It's difficult to see here, but an R prime, then U prime, which is this slice, R would insert it, and then a U interchange. So let's do that. R prime. And now it's the U prime. Doing U prime is really hard, so I'm gonna rotate and do it like this. R prime U prime R. There you go. That's my insertion. You see, this is still mostly solved. That's a good sign. And now we want we wanted to do a U interchange. So let's do that U interchange. Now we're gonna undo our inter insertion. R prime U. Oh no, I think I got the direction wrong. Oh god, what happened? I seem to have messed something up. Oh no, no, this is fine actually. I'm gonna do my R. And our inter interchange... Yeah, this looks terrible right now. I didn't mess up though. So our inter interchange was U. Let's not do a U prime. Oh no, I messed up. No, I didn't. Let's let's undo the the setup move that we had, and now everything looks better. But I did do this uh, the wrong direction accidentally, so let's just do that again. Prime. Now we have this center goes to here, goes to here. I'll go a bit faster this time since I did this exact algorithm. R prime, U prime, R, U and uh, interchange. R prime slice U R U prime and now let's undo this setup move and there we go the middle is solved uh, yeah cool okay um, 
yeah so basically you're gonna do the exact same thing for uh, the rest of the center except you won't be able to always let's let's look at the outer corners now for example these two are solved but we don't want two solved corners we want one solved corner let's try to solve a different corner oh actually no 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 we can't choose that anymore because we want these to be solved we want these like we want these uh, corners to be solved relative to the center so oh no these two are solved and these two need to solve that's just the two swap i said we can't do that how do we deal with it well Mass Morphics has similar pieces, like how you can you have uh, two identical edges and two identical okay, no you don't have corners. You have identical edges, you also have identical centers. Let's look at for example this red piece and this red piece. They're the same. So I can do a commutator and what's my comment like which three pieces do I need to cycle? I want to bring this one into here, and that would do nothing because they're the same piece. This, so this would still look the same. So I'll bring this one into here, and this one into... No. No, that's not what I want to do. I'm sorry I got confused, this is a confusing puzzle. I want to bring this, this piece into here, and that would keep, that would keep this solved. This piece into here, and that would, this will return to where we started from, which is into here. So how are we going to do that? I can interchange these with a U2 and with an R prime U prime R I can insert this into the back right here. So start with the U2 because I want this needs to go into here. So a U2. Now we're going to do our R prime U prime. I'm, do I'm doing it like, like this to do the slice. R prime U prime R. Now we're going to do our U2 interchange. And now we're going to undo that with an R prime U R. And we don't need to align the top layer because our Alex started with the U2. And now we have corners solved. Doing the same for uh, these edges is the exact same. Like solving these edges now is the exact same thing. If you have two solved pieces, then um, you're gonna need to uh, you're gonna need to bring in another piece from a center you've already solved. If you get lucky and you don't, that's cool. Um, yeah, let's see. Now I'm gonna do these three because uh, this one's already solved. And I don't need to. Uh, so I don't need to bring anything from anything else. I won't. So I'm gonna do this to here to here. I'm gonna go a bit, a bit faster now. Y def prime setup. And now we can insert with an R prime U prime R to here. Interchange with the U two. Let's do the U two. R prime. U prime. R, U2, R prime, U, R. And again, it's important since I started with the U2, like I did the interchange first, and then like I did the interchange first, so I don't need to do it uh, now because I already undid it when doing the second U2. So I don't need to do any more moves before undoing the setup move. Okay, now I have um, just these two swapped. Uh, so I'm gonna again bring in this a, red, a piece from the red blue center. So this piece is gonna go to here, it's gonna go to here. We can insert it again with the R from U from R, interchange with the U. I've noticed every single commentator I've done the same way R from U from R, then some U interchange. Except every time the, the layer differs, sometimes it's gonna be this layer, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's this. Yeah, this this should be, like come intuitively, or figuring out which one to do should be intuitive. Understanding comes is a bit difficult though. So I'm gonna do this. U R prime U prime 
car. Oh no, that's not that doesn't work. Let's let's undo that. Yeah, so because you have two different types of uh, <laughs> of obliques, the one I picked didn't work. Let's pick this one instead because it's on the same center as the same type of oblique, so it's gonna be different. Then we got to here, to here, to here. First, let's let's start with a U interchange. And then we'll want to bring this this to here, so I'm gonna do an R prime. And actually, this part, this time it's gonna be a D. R. That U prime. That R prime. D prime. R. And there we go. I'm done with centers. Now, edges are basically exactly the same as 3x3 three three, so I'm not even gonna I'm not really gonna explain them almost at all um, yeah because they're, they're the same I don't do free slice pairing here because I think it's too risky I just uh, do like chain pairing but it doesn't matter which way you do which way you do it as long as you don't mess up the, your centers you're good and up until your last few edges, there's no reason to. Why did I say last few? I meant last edge. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna solve the edges and I'll be back. Okay, now even though it's not that difficult to tell which center needs to go where, it's still possible to make a mistake and accidentally solve two, cent two centers or even more and swap places. So I'll show you how to swap two centers. In this case, I need to swap the yellow red and the yellow green. And this is very simple, uh, it's just like on 6x6, you hold them in the front and the top, and just do R U to R prime, L prime U to L. And if you didn't know that for normal 6x6, this is very useful, and you should know this. Pretty cool. I forgot to mention this, so now that I'm editing the video, I'll show you. I'm editing the video right now. And uh, yeah, I realized I forgot to say this. So here it is. I have uh, this looks like a parody. Like I have only two I just swapped. And you probably know that doing the alg would mess up my centers. Uh, you could probably figure an alg without messing up centers, but there's no reason to right now. Like, just like what we did with centers, where we took an already solved one. There's another piece exactly like this, right over here. Right over here, I mean. So let's do this. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's move this out, and now, actually, uh, notice that like these cycles are exactly like commutators. I'm gonna insert this to there, and now we're gonna replace it with that, and now we're gonna put this back, and then we're gonna like, there's no need to do this, that will be undoing the uh, interchange. Now we have a master morphix. Cool. Let's uh, let's solve this. I wonder what parodies we'll get, uh, run into. Not really because I've solved this before and I probably ran into every single one you could get. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Alright, and we're on to the last layer. So, this is uh, where you can encounter a bunch of uh, problematic uh, situations. We've got that. Seems like I've skipped EO. So, let's start solving EP with Zooms. Again, I'm 
I'm assuming you know how to do this. This is part, like just beginners that's there for Master Morphix. Oh no, I have the flipped edge. I'm pretty sure this can happen on the Master Morphix too. Like just just swap it with this edge. So, when we reach this, this is frustrating. Let's try. I, I remember I solved this and I didn't have to do any algorithms, but I don't remember how I did that. How about this? No. Let's, let's try to do Olo 30 and see what happens. I'm gonna do it with the slices to affect as little as possible. And I'll see what happens. I can probably fix the centers with the commentators. I don't think I messed this up. Yeah, this is looking good. Oh! It just flips the center! That's... Oh my god, that's so much simpler than what I did yesterday! Yesterday? Was it two weeks ago? The one I did last time! That's so much simpler! Just do this, and then do the alg to flip a center. I'm mad. This was... So much simpler than what I than what I did last time. Oh my god. Okay, yep. There, there's the puzzle solved. So um, yeah. There's one more type of parody which you can run into. And I didn't run into. So I'm gonna quickly set that up. Okay, I am feeling lazy, and it's very late at night, so I'll only demonstrate for some of the pieces. I'll show a picture on the screen, but basically you can get a center where er like everything is solid except the center is rotated 90 degrees. And, like, I tried to find a, a cool solution, and I couldn't find any anything cool and efficient. So I just decided to solve it again with commutators like how we did our last center. I'm going to show you the concept for the middle centers because the concept is the same for all the rest of them. So basically what we want to do, this is as if it's a four cycle. So like this piece wants to go to here, wants to go to here, wants to go to here, wants to go to here. We can't do a four cycle because that's even and we know how to do three cycles, which are odd. No, it's the opposite. Three cycles are two two swaps. Four cycles are three two swaps. We only know how to do even, not odd. So we want to add another another piece to the equation here. Oh hey, this piece, these are uh, one colored pieces. Look at this. This piece is the exact same. So you can do commutators from here to here because it wants to go to here. So like this piece goes here, goes here. That's one algorithm. Like that's one commentator we're gonna do. Then we're gonna do this piece again, which by now this piece will be here because we do we go here to here to here to here. So this green piece will be here now. And that means I wanna take it I wanna bring the green piece over here to here to there. And when we finish this, this piece will be back in its place. How do we do this? Okay. I can insert 
this corner to here with an R prime U prime R. So let's start with the U2 because I want to bring it to this place. And now I'm going to do R prime U prime R. Okay, sick. And now this part depends on which way the center is going to need to rotate. Um, in this case, I need to do a U prime. If you pick the wrong direction, you can do the 180 degree flipping alg, which you should know for general cuboids. Anyway, let's uh, undo the insertion. Okay. And we did our first commutator. And now we just want to finish. So this piece can go to here, go to here. So we're gonna do that R prime, U prime, R, U. I'm sorry, I need to do a U prime. I said I was doing U primes, and the that stays for the entire uh, for the entire like parity case thing, whatever. False equivalence. Anyway, I finished the alg, and this would like turn these four. At this point, you'd still have these four rotated. So you need to repeat this process I just did for each piece type, meaning two commutators per piece type and one, two, three piece types. 12 commentators. It's ugly, it's long, and there's a decent chance of messing up, but it's the only thing I found that works. So this is the end of the video. If you still have any questions about like the solve, anything I did, if you need, you're trying to solve this and you need help, uh, ask in the comments, I will answer. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching till the end. This was a very long video. I hope this was helpful to at least one person. Yeah, again, thanks for watching. Bye.